Hey, Jody, just a couple questions before we talk about the movie. Okay. I have an old collection of TV guides, and I was going through it, and <laughs> I saw this, this, this old TV series with, with uh, Chris Conley, uh, Paper, Paper Moon. Mm -hmm. uh, how big a thrill for you at the time, and when it was canceled, were you, uh, was that like a devastating thing at that age? Oh yeah, in fact, I think it was the last time I ever did television. <laughs> I was so upset at having been given this family in some ways, because you work long hours, you work for long periods of time in television, uh, and then suddenly one day it's taken away from you. And um, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I was so upset. I, my mom said, well, you don't ever have to do a series again, and that was the end of it. Well, were there ever times in your career that you were ever like, discouraged? Because you know, a lot of actors don't ever make that transition from, uh, from child actor to adult. Was there ever a time where you thought it wasn't going to happen? Well, I'm discouraged pretty much every day of my life. And uh, <laughs> I never thought I would be an actor when I grew up. I thought that I would grow up and do something else because I think my mom prepared me for the disaster of it. And she wanted to make sure that I was still had self-confidence. And so she would say, well, when you grow up, are you going to be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever? You know, as if... Uh, being an actor was kind of something that a child did and that it wasn't going to be my life. Um, and the good news about that is that I still pursued an education. I, I still looked at the world in a different way um, and, and was interested in other things. And I think I've been able to bring that to my work. But I have to say, I, I still have a big inferiority complex about it and I always think I never know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, well, we'll turn to this one and you do know what you're doing. You're a very, a very talented Thank performer you. and a director. But in this film, when I, when I think of surreal locations, those radio antennas, yes. uh, how did those strike you when you saw them for the first time? Oh, they're amazing. I mean, you're, you're driving down the desert and suddenly they appear like these little ears, you know, in the, in, in the desert. And uh, the first time that you stand underneath one and see one move is pretty, pretty much an amazing feeling. Uh, I actually am one of the only people in the movie that got to go up inside one of them and stand and look at the dish from, you know, from... Uh, from the inside, right. and that's amazing because you have the blue sky and all mm -hmm. that, so it was great. And got a question about Matthew McConaughey. Yes. You know, last year you couldn't s seem to open a magazine where he wasn't on on the cover right. of it. Uh, how, what did you two talk about uh, the whole idea about handling fame and all this celebrity attention? Oh well, he doesn't need any talking to. I think he's a he's just a down home guy, and he's always going to be a down home guy. Um, well, occasionally I would I would give him little little hints about, you know, um, uh, you know, not to invite the UPS guy into his house for a beer and stuff. <laughs> uh, but, you know, things like that. Right. But, uh, but he doesn't need any help. He's a big boy. You know, there are a couple of scenes that look especially grueling for you. Uh, the ones in the chair. I mean, I think the whole audience was feeling for you. What was the, the day, the shooting day in hell for you on this film? That was the shooting day in hell, is the chair. Uh, there, there are many different chairs. The first chair, um, and m one of the most violent, shaking, uh, shaking feelings. I, I definitely, I did two days of that, and by the third day I woke up and started having vertigo and nausea and all this sort of stuff, and, and realized that my inner ear was, was, wasn't in good shape, and uh, asked them if maybe we could stop that scene and move on to the next one so that my head could get a break. Um, but uh, other than that, I think the most difficult thing really is just all of the opticals and blue screen stuff because it, it's very, very technical and yet you're really trying to give the audience a feeling that it's really happening and that you're very passionate and energetic and spontaneous and of course you've done it 45 times and, uh, and you're trying to accommodate all these little camera moves so, so that becomes the most difficult thing.